Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the TA Marisha Community College's virtual press conference on the opening of school for first year students. Thank you for joining us on this virtual platform. I am Trelana Charles, the Corporate Communications Officer at the TA Marisha Community College. This morning, we have with us two panelists who will update you on the steps being taken by Town CC going forward with regards to our incoming students. An update on the upcoming graduation ceremony will also be given. We have with us our registrar and acting principal at the TA Marisha Community College, Mrs. Marva Bowen-Neptune, and the Dean of the School of Continuing Education, Mrs. Lauren Alexander. This live press conference is being streamed via the Tam City Facebook page, the GIS Facebook page, and the GIS TV. Thank you to GIS for your continued support. During this press conference, all presentations by our panelists will be done first after which we will open the floor for members of media to pose their questions. Our online audience, you can also submit your questions in the chat on Facebook and we will answer your questions as well. We will now have our first presentation from our registrar and acting principal, Mrs. Bowen Neptune, good morning to you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Charles, thank you very much and good morning to everyone um, on the panel and those listening via Facebook and other mediums. A pleasant good morning to everyone. Um, I want to thank the prospective students, year one students, for applying to the TA Marishal Community College and for their interests in the TA Marishal Community College. I always also want to say to them that I hope that they are doing well. I know many of them would have probably lost a loved one or know someone in their circle would have been affected by COVID. So I want to say to you our prayers and thoughts are with you as a college community. And we are excited to have the students join us as our first year students at the TA Marshall Community College. We are actually excited to have them join us. So much so that we would have had um, orientation for them already, um, though we do not have the results and we would have had um, introduction to college life. That's a course that they would have done um, online to acquaint them with the college and the do's and don'ts and all the things that they need to pay attention to when they become officially our students. Before I get into the year ones uh, or new uh, cohorts of students that would be coming to join us at the college. I want us to focus on our outgoing students and they are the year two students. I want to take the opportunity to congratulate them. They would have done um, a, an excellent job in um, completing two years at the TA Marshall Community College. And most of them would receive an associate degree soon. We have not conferred the de degree yet. And so I want to take the opportunity to not only congratulate them, but to give them some information. A lot of them, they would have been calling and asking questions, and we owe it to them to let them know what is happening. On the 14th of October, we planned um, uh, an award ceremony to award the top students in their program um, that event we had to cancel because of the developments with COVID on the island of Grenada. And so unfortunately, we weren't able to um, award the students um, during that, that, that time. However, we want to let them know that we would subsume that event into our graduate graduation ceremony. And now I want to let them know and to remind them, we would have mentioned to them before, that our graduation ceremony will be held on the 2nd of December. That's a Thursday. And so we are in the process of auditing all the students to make sure they have met the requirements to be awarded the associate degree in their various programs. And we would award the top students, as I said before, during this time. So unfortunately, we have to resort to this medium to um, inform our community. Although we are sending them emails, we thought it 
best to have um, a press conference to give them um, more information on what we are planning to do in case they have challenges with their devices at home. Some of them, they don't have connectivity and all of that. We wanted to make sure that they know what is happening. So I wanna to say to them that during the month of November, we are going to let the students know if they would have met the requirements for the associate degree. What I want the students to focus on, and that's our year, um, year two, outgoing students is whether they would have done everything that they need to do in order to be qualified for this degree. And in so doing, I'm encouraging, encouraging the students to speak to their academic advisors. Go over your progress reports. And if you think that you would have failed anything or you would have gotten um, a grade uh, C minus and below, you um, you could very well apply to do a reset, and that reset would be held sometime later on this month. And it's not too late to do that reset so that you can be qualified in December for graduation. Now, if you have failed that um, anything, and you know it's a requirement for graduation what we want to let you know is that now that we have started school on the 4th of um, actually just Monday, we want to let you know that you can still add or you can still register for the deficient course and possibly um, make it in time. If, if, if you, you can't make it, you probably will be able to walk in the graduation because your um, exams will be done possibly by the end of December. So if you have one course or two courses, you should be able to um, take that course now and possibly be able to walk in graduation. When I say walk, that means you would only have six credits to complete to get your associate degree. So I want to let the students know that they have been asking and writing and emails, emailing um, various ones at the college. So I want to um, get that information to you. So um, if you have further questions, of course, you can contact your academic advisor, or you can send a letter to our email to um, the registrar's office, and we will try to answer your questions. But don't call now, because we don't have any information on whether you have met the requirements for graduation yet. We would have that information soon. So that, I think, as I... Well, let me just add this one, um, the distribution of certificates. I know some of you are planning to leave Grenada. Just know that the distribution will be held the second week in December, our graduation ceremony, as I mentioned to you before, will be held on the 2nd of December. The week after that, you can collect your certificate at the college. And if you're not in Grenada, then you will probably have to send someone with uh, identification and give them the permission to collect your certificate on your behalf. What I want to encourage the students is to keep checking their emails because as you know, we're in a pandemic and we can't um, call every student um, um, personally, but through your email, we will give information. Now for the opening of school, I want to make that transition here for the opening of school for year one. Now, if you applied to the college, I had mentioned that before, if you applied to the college, then you would have received some information from us already. You would have received your email address. We want to say to the student that once you apply to the college and you receive your email address, you have to start using your email address. So information will be sent to you using that email address and not your personal email address going forward. You have done uh, training or you would have, we have sent you a video in the use of Moodle. You will be using the Moodle flat platform in um, conjunction with um, other um, online programs to help you through the college. We want to say to you, 
Now you have to start thinking, how am I going to access um, my studies or my courses at the TA Marshall Community College? Because I um, want you to know that when we start class, when class, we would do it online. So we would not have face-to-face -face classes starting from the 26th of October. So that is when we are expecting to start classes for year one students on October 26th. Now, the reason for that is that we are still waiting on the CXC results. We don't have it yet, but we're, I think, during the week of the 11th of um, on or before the 15th thereabout, we should have that results. And once we have that results, we are going to have a registration period. Now the registration period for all students and I want the year one students, we send students because we're hoping that you, you would have done well in your CXC, CXCs and you would, would have gotten your results. So the um, registration for you will be held on the 18th of October to the 22nd of October. Now, this registration will be held very differently from what was done before. Now, I want to share with you what is going to happen, and I hope that you are on and you are listening. Now, for the registration, you would not be coming to the TA Marshall Community College for registration. What we are going to do, once you would have applied into a program, the advisor of the program will call you, and that is specific to students in the profession would have applied to the School of Arts, Sciences, and Professional Studies, you have to listen to this carefully. So oftentimes they, you know, they don't listen and, and sometimes they have to call and with the same things we would have shared. So I want you to listen. So you're not going to be coming to the TA Marshall Community College to do the registration process. So what you need to do is once the results are, are, are out, you wait. During the week of October 18, that's for the professional school to the 22nd, we are going to contact you. We are going to contact you to discuss your results and whether or not you have met the requirements to be um, accepted into the TA Marshall Community College. We know that you would have done orientation. We know that you would have, would have done introduction to college life, but you're not officially our students. You become our students once you are successful with your CXC. And what successful means? Means that you have um, achieved five passes in your CXEs, including English. If you get four, that's another story. It does not mean that you would not get into the TA Marshall Community College. What it means is that you may not get into the program you applied into. So for example, if you applied into natural sciences as a year one incoming student, but you did not get the science subject. So you want to come in and do math. You want to come in and do chemistry or biology but you did not get the, um, the subjects at CXC, you cannot be a natural sciences student. You will get into the college, um, into a different program, but not nat natural sciences. So your CXC subjects are pegged to the program that you want to do at the TA Marshall Community College. So having said that, even if you do not get the required five subjects in including English, that all is not lost. We have certificate programs and my colleague, Ms. Lorraine Alexander, who's the Dean of SE, she's going to share what would happen to you. So you need not have to call and ask, Ms. I didn't get all the subject, what should I do? We are going to get in touch with you. So if, for example, the results come out and oops, I only get um, four subjects or you know, I, what do I do? Do not panic we are going to get in touch with you and we are going to let you know what pathway we're gonna have for you. There are other things that you can do to prepare you. Our motto is we, we take you from where you are 
to where you want to go. And so we would not leave you hanging. So don't panic, you would be able to get in. However, if you did not apply to the TM Marshall Community College, we want you to make sure that you put in that application now. And the application fee is $100. If you don't put in that application, what's going to happen is that when you are, uh, get your results, you will be scrambling because we do not have time to, to waste because we already um, at maybe almost more than a month, um, maybe about six weeks or, or seven weeks we are losing in this semester. So we have to take up and running. So you have to put in that application now so we can process, process the application and we can get you ready for when the results come to accept you. So I want to um, share that with you. And I think um, I'm going to stop here and allow my colleague, Miss Lorraine Alexander, the Dean of the School of Continuing Education to share more information with you. But what I want to encourage you as a new student is to make sure you are checking your term CC email, not your personal email that you would have shared with us, but your term CC email. And if at some time your email is not working, what you need to do is to send um, the term CC email is to send us an email using your personal email, of course, because your term CC email is not working at helpdesk at tamcc.edu.gd and someone will get in touch with you to rectify the situation. Let me share that email address with you again. Help desk, all lowercase, at tamcc.edu.gd. Thank you very much. And Ms. Alexander, you go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, um, Mrs. Neptune. Um, good morning to our viewers, members of the press, and most importantly, good morning to our prospective students and the parents of guardians. I too would like to extend sympathy to those of you who have lost loved ones, those of you in mourning. I pray that God comforts you at this time. It is a privilege to be here on behalf of the TA Marisha Community College together with our acting principal and our corporate communications officer as we inform you of our registration plans. I will also use this opportunity to let the public know about two new associate degree programs being offered at the TA Marisha Community College for the new academic year. You would have heard from Mrs. Neptune about the registration plans for the School of Arts, Science, and Professional Studies. I would therefore speak about the registration plans for the School of Applied Arts and Technology, as well as for the School of Continuing Education, SCE. With the anticipation that the college will be received or have access to the Caribbean Examination Council results, on or before October 15th, the School of Applied Arts and Technology is in the process of, of, of contacting prospective students to schedule the interviews. Interviews will be held virtually during the week of October 11th to the 15th, that's next week. Students will be contacted using the email and or telephone number, which was provided on the application forms. The interview will give students an opportunity to obtain more information about the school and answer any questions they may have. It will also help determine whether the applicant has knowledge of the field of study. In other words, if what the student has applied for is really what the student wants to do based on career desire and aspirations, and if a redirection should be advised. Following this first week of engagement, the school will then, the school will then would have received the CXC results. The school will again contact the applicants. 
And this will be done hopefully during the week of October 18th to the 21st. And from here on, perform academic advising. That is the students will be informed on whether or not they have been accepted to the program of choice, the program they may have been directed to during the previous engagement with the school or to an alternative program within the college, but outside of SAT, the School of Applied Arts and Technology. The school will then commence first year classes from October 26, 2021. That is when they hope that they would have received the CX results as stated. And all classes will be conducted using a virtual mode in the first instance. Now, the School of Continuing Education, SCE, also in anticipation of the release of the CXC passes, we will contact our applicants during the week of October 18th to the 22nd. The students will be contacted via WhatsApp, email, or direct calls using the information provided again on the applications. During the first contact, the students will be informed that the advisor wishes to conduct a virtual video interview. We want to conduct a video interview just to assess the student, the expression, et cetera. The application or program to be used will be discussed. That is either Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, or WhatsApp video call. The student and the advisor will agree on a time for the interview, and the advisor will send the link to the student. During this interview, the student will be provided with information on the program to which he or she has applied to. And an assessment will be made by the assessor to determine if the program is the right fit for the student based on the student's career plans and aspirations. The student may be redirected if required. Academic advising will then be provided based on the CXC passes. So this plan is very similar to that of SAT, except that SC is doing it within one week. Students who have not qualified for any of our technical diploma programs will be directed to our CXC classes or to our high school equivalency program. The public is however reminded that the basic academic requirements to enter some of our technical programs at the School of Continuing Education is only two CXC passes and above are CBQ level one certification. Therefore, we have a place at Tam CC for almost everyone. Classes at the School of Continuing Education will then commence from Tuesday, October 26, virtually in the first instance using our Moodle platform. The administrators at the School of Continuing Education thought it prudent to ensure that both the school and the students are on the same page. Therefore, an inf information session will be held with parents and students during the class day on October 26th and 27th. So we start class and we'll take a break and have these sessions. And the, in, during these sessions, we'll discuss some housekeeping matters as it relates to virtual online classes. I want to highlight here that most of the programs offered by both the School of Continuing Education and the School of Applied Arts and Technology are te technical in nature and require a number of face-to-face -face sessions. I'm therefore urging our students to get vaccinated so that they may attend the practical sessions on our campuses in a not too distant future as well as experience college life at TAMCC. Madam Principal, while I have the floor, please permit me to highlight the two new programs offered by the college. The TA Marisha Community College is offering a new program called Environmental Technology for which tuition assist assistance will be provided for the first year of study. 
to qualify for school or partial tuition assistance, students will be required to have five CXC passes, inclusive of English A. Biology and chemistry will be an asset. The students will also need to write an essay highlighting the interest in a program, as well as the need for tuition assistance. This essay will be reviewed by a panel who will make the decision and subsequently inform the students. This new program was developed under the Skills to Access the Green Economy SAGE project, which is a collaboration between the TA Mauritio Community College and two Canadian college, namely the Marine Institute and the Nova Scotia Community College, NSCC. The project is sponsored by the Government of Canada and implemented by the College and the Institute of Canada, CICON. The program focuses around the blue economy with specific courses addressing ocean literacy, introductory and advanced geomatics, ocean and coastal sampling, and sustainability of natural resources. There are several basic science courses, including biology, chemistry, and environmental studies. This is an opportunity for Grenadian students to diverse their skill sets in new areas. Another new program offered by the School of Continuing Education on a full-time and part-time basis is the associate degree in accounting technician. This program was developed to target students who are desirous of becoming professional accountants. The program includes the nine courses offered under the Certified Accounting Technician CAT Diploma offered by SCCA Global. Our students will therefore be prepared to sit the nine courses under the SCCA's CAT program while pursuing the associate degree in TAMCC. So during the two years that the student spends with us, they'll, they will be given the opportunity to write this international exams. And so they'll have the opportunity to graduate with dual certification and associate degree from TAMCC and the diploma from ACCA Global. To qualify for this program, students need, of course, the five CXCs, including English A, or two or two or more years of experience in the field of accounting with a diagnostic exam, or level two CBQ, certificate of competence or technical diploma in accounting club. This program hopes, we hope to commence this program as well from October 26, and it will replace the level two accounting club program previously offered at the Tantin campus. The program will now be offered, the accounting club program that is, will now be offered at the St. Patrick's campus. I'm therefore making a request to all past students to check out this opportunity by emailing the admissions office via admissions at tamcc.edu.gd or email the coordinator via Mauricia J, that is M-O-R-I-C-I-A-J at tamcc.edu.gd. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for listening. I thank you for your time. I will now redirect your attention to acting principal and registrar, Mrs. Neptune, who will now speak to you on methods available to our students to make the tuition payments. Mrs. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Um, Mrs. Alexander. Um, yes, so I want something understand what is happening. Remember, your results should be coming out soon. Once we get your results, we are going to contact you. You don't contact us. We are going to discuss with you um, your program and registration. Now, if you get accepted into our programs, then you'll have to pay. Now, the tuition to, for TAMCC um, is 810. 
for pharmacy, you pay a little bit more. I believe it's 1373. But for the, all the regular programs, you pay 810. Now, because of COVID, we are not accepting payments, well, on a very small scale at the college. So I will give you some option. Once you get accepted into that program, you would need to, um, you, your advisor would let you know, yes, you've met the requirement, we're gonna accept you. Then you need to pay. Now you can pay um, through Republic Bank and the account number, Grenada, the account number is 102741. Or you can pay using that same number, 102741, through First Caribbean Bank. So you can go to Republic Bank to pay to account 102741 or First Caribbean Bank. You can also pay to Scotia Bank through Republic Bank on account number 3003910. Or you can also pay through Co-op Bank to the, the account number at given before 102741. So you're paying to Republic Bank, First Caribbean and Co-op Bank using account number 102741 and to Republic Bank um, with the former Scotia through um, using account number 3003910. So that would be how you'd pay. Now, we would let you know that um, another option, we would let the students know, that that's why I'm, I'm appealing to you to be on your email. Now, you can uh, come to the college, we'd schedule appointments with you. So you can come if you cannot pay through online or virtually, um, you can come to the college using a drop box to deposit your check. Um, we would give you details on the drop box through your email. So keep checking your email or you can pay cash by in um, appointment only um, right at the college. So there are two other ways that you can pay. If you that um, the options provided here through online banking is not working for you, you can pay um, it with cash at the college by appointment only, or you to our information more information with now all students to have so t-shirts uh, for the children before that we are in the first instant we instance we will be um, online online learning online classes and I said before that you need to work this out how is this going to look for you in terms of having um, your, your devices and, or, and, and Wi-Fi. Now, you pay for the t-shirts with the expectation that you would be on campus soon. We have not worked that out yet, but you can pay once you get accepted for t-shirts as well. So you can pay through the bank for t-shirts when you also go to pay up. All students are required to have their t-shirts. And we're not expected to be in a virtual space for the entire um, year or maybe for forever. We expect it to either do blended or rotation, whatever it is, um, rotate your classes. We are expecting to do that. So we want you to have your t-shirts. And we would also let you know when to come in to get your ID to, to um, visit campus or to um, come on campus, you must use your ID card. So we would let you know um, when to collect your t-shirts and when to collect your ID cards. So that's the two things that I want to explain. Now, if you have in trouble with Moodle, that's a platform that we use to deliver online learning. If you are having problem with Moodle, send your email again to that same address I gave before, helpdesk at tamcc.edu.gd. So 
um, you may try to log into Moodle, you can't get through, you are, you are frustrated, don't get frustrated. Just send that email um, and we would, uh, someone will get back to you to help you. So I hope I would have um, provided um, in a lot of information here for you. But one other thing that I want you to know, for your online banking, you must send us the receipt. If we don't get the receipt, then we, we, we need the receipts because the way the bank um, banking system is set up, um, we, we can have delays in verifying whether you pay or not. So help us by sending your receipt. Once you get accepted, send your receipt to payments, P-A-Y-M-E-N-T-S, at tamcc.edu.gd. So you would have, so here are a couple of things. You wait for the call, you get advised, you make your payment, submit your receipt to payments at tamcc.edu.gd. After you would have done all this, you would get your schedule via your email. So you would know when your classes starts, when which class starts from nine to 10 to eight to 10, you, you would get a schedule. So you have to be on your email. All right. I think I would have exhausted most of uh, the, the information here. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for um, listening and to uh, Ms. Charles, I would turn right back to you so you can continue. Thank you, Mrs. Natuna. And thank you to both our panelists for your very clear and very detailed presentations. We will now provide an opportunity for the members of the media presence to ask their questions. Members of the media, you will indicate by raise of hand in the chat. I will call your name and you will proceed to ask your questions. Our online viewers, you can also leave your questions in the Facebook chat and I'm already seeing some questions coming in and they will be addressed after the media has had a chance to ask their questions. Um, so I'm seeing an indication from Marina Pet thomas from GVN. Serena, you can go ahead. Yes, good morning to everybody. I have a couple questions, um, focusing a little bit on tuition fee. Can somebody um, give us a, give a guidelines as it relates to students who are supported by government? when it relates to the payment of their fees and um, going forward and not just government, but uh, scholarships through, through scholarships um, through other organizations. And um, I realize, well, uh, due to the situation we face with, we see that school will continue virtually. Um, understanding that some families are uh, or cannot or not able to deal with the virtual platforms with the children, um, as they would need support from government and other stuff to pay the tuition. Is there any um, way the CAMCC will help these students who don't have uh, the virtual devices or the devices needed um, to go ahead with the classes? Okay, um, let me take uh, the first question that you would have asked regarding payments. Now, all students are expected to pay their tuition once they get accepted to the college and I would have gone through that in detail. Now, in the case of a student getting um, support from any organizations, because we do have um, some um, sponsors who help students, they, of course, they don't have to worry about their payment. We would have their names and we would just continue with the registration for them. So once they get accepted into the program, and they would have mentioned to the advisor that they, um, this sponsor would take care of their tuition. We would go ahead and we would register the students. What normally happens is that the government of Grenada and sponsors, they would um, inform us that they are willing to sponsor student A, B, C, or D. Once we get that list, we go ahead and we register the students. Now, what happens is that sometimes they don't sponsor the full amount. And when that happens, they have to take care of the difference. So they would have to let, let me know that they are unable to pay their portion at the moment. 
and then we would take it from there. But so, but we have to communicate. They would have to inform, they would have to say what is happening, and then we would take it from there. But the students, once they are sponsored, it's no trouble at all. Once we get a letter um, agreeing to pay the tuition of a student, then we would just go ahead with the registration. But we cannot um, register you if we are uncertain when you're, well, how you're going to make that payment. So that's one, and I hope that takes care of it to those who are listening who understands that you have to pay your A10, but in the event that you get a sponsor, they would have to send a letter to say that they want to sponsor you. Um, once we get that letter, we'd go ahead with the registration. If you cannot, if they're not sponsoring all, then you will need to let us know, and then we would help you um, and tell you what to do thereafter. But you are not allowed to enter to attend classes if you are not registered. And um, some people try, but you are not allowed to do so. Um, the next thing is for and and that one is really it's it's a concern to us at the T. M. Marshall Community College. We understand that there are some families who aren't able to make the payments. So that's why we are currently reaching out to Corporate Grenada to help us with a, a donation of a laptop or so, so that we can make available um, to our students. We are looking at ways that we can partner so that we can get the support um, for students. As a matter of fact, we are, are in discussions with um, Flo to see even if we can get some form of discounted um, Wi-Fi package um, internet package for the students. So that's one thing we are doing. And the next thing we are doing, we are appealing. Let me use the opportunity to appeal to Corporate Grenada to help these young stars get a, a, a tertiary um, education. And education is a great equalizer, as we know. And so by partnering with us, we can help the students in this way. We at the college, we don't have the resources personally to give um, as a, a as well, I should say personally, but we don't have the resources as an institution to give to the students who do not have. But at the same time, if we work together with corporate Grenada, who would help us, or maybe uh, in the diaspora, spora, or, or alumni, we are currently trying to source laptops here and there. So once we are successful, then we're going to make it available to students who really, really need but we are appealing to anyone who wants to make, um, who listening and they wants to make, um, they want to make a donation to the T. M. Marshall Community College specifically to help students who are in need to access classes. Then we are very, very um, willing and um, waiting to partner with you. I hope I answered your question. Mm -hmm. Rene, is, is that all? I have another question, and yes, you answered both questions for me, um, Ms. Mrs. Neptune. One of my final questions is, uh, what kind of curriculum it's, uh, would be in place for students whose courses or whose um, major would be fully practical, um, especially those with continued education? We have plumbing, um, I know the food and beverage and uh, electrical, those courses that are mainly practical, how are you going to address it? Okay, I guess I'll take this one, Ms. Neptune. Right, so uh, Mrs. Thomas, um, what we did is that we have looked at our curriculum. We have looked at the, 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 the different units that made up, make up the program. And we have identified those that we can offer in semester one while we are uh, closed down that are more theory in nature. Because of course, even though if you're teaching plumbing, you have some theoretical knowledge that the student needs. And so we are offering those first with the hope that by the time we get to the practical, things will be will ease up, the students will be vaccinated and we can go back on campus face to face. Okay, thank you. So okay, thank answers. you. Yes. Um, are there any other members of the media you can indicate? And I will take your questions. 
In the meantime, I think I will go to one of the questions we're seeing on Facebook. Um, someone is asking, is it mandatory for students to take the vaccine or is it compulsory for face-to-face -face classes? Mrs. Neptune, I think you can take that one. Well, that's an extremely good question. Um, but at the same time, we are at the college, we as a college, we're not able to make that decision. That's a policy decision. We are following closely what the Ministry of Education is doing. So we have not um, taken that decision yet. We encourage our students to, um, after discussing with their family and doing their research and they want to take the vaccine, um, we're encouraging them to do so if they so wish, but we are not mandating at the moment based on what um, we are told in terms of policy, mandating anything to our students at the moment. So right now we are online, we are not face-to-face, -face. hopefully we'll be um, doing face-to-face -face maybe sometime November, I'm not sure. If we are in a fluid situation, so we cannot just make um, permanent pronouncements here, but you are not required at the moment to take the vaccine. Okay, thank you. I have another one for you. Um, someone is asking, is it possible to walk into Republic Bank and pay cash to the account, the bank account that you indicated? Um, if yes, what is the name of the account or the name on the account? The name on the account is D. Marshall Community College. And um, I am aware that you can pay cash to that account as well, unless something has changed that I'm not aware of. Yes. Okay. And if writing a check, who do they make the check out to? Same, T. Marshall Community College. Okay. We have another question. What is the procedure for getting an invoice from TAMCC? Um, you can get an invoice, um, send an email to payments um, at tamcc.edu.gd and make that request if you need an invoice and one will be emailed to you. Okay, um, I'm seeing one here that's, um, if you are not awaiting CSEC results, when can the students be registered? Um, this was mentioned, but I think maybe you can just really go back through it for them, for this. Um, well, we, we are going to begin the registration period on the 18th. So that is not very far. Um, so let us, if you're not, awaiting your results someone you just have to wait on the call we can we will call you um, we can do so anytime from now but we prefer that you be registered during during the registration period which starts from the 18th of october so that's not very far so be a little patient and we will be with you shortly um, Rena Peh, I'm seeing you're, you're still indicating. Do you have another question? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, could Ms. Neptune um, just verify the graduation in December um, is expected to be virtual or um, otherwise? And is there any strategies in place uh, for the graduates to either get their gongs or take their pictures? Any strategies in place for December coming? Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's a good. That's mm -hmm. a good one as well. Actually, um, had to mention it. Um, yes, it will be purely virtual. Um, it's nothing new. We've done it last year, so it will mimic. We would improve on it, but it will mimic what was done last year in the month of November, because we are um, currently uh, auditing um, the graduation, the students who are um, eligible for graduation. That's the year two students. We are auditing the progress report. And in the month of November, we are going to send to them the dates when they come to collect their gongs and when they will have their pictures taken. Now, because of, again, because of COVID, we want to treat this um, with extreme care because we don't want a situation where we have a 
uh, uh, crowd and we can't manage. So we are looking into it. Um, during the month of November, that's when they should get ready to come in to take their, take their pictures and to also collect their gongs and um, we'll take it from there. Irina, is that it? Okay, all right. Um, okay, we're seeing a question from another me uh, member of the media. Mr. Campbell from Now Grenada is asking, um, is TAMTC experiencing any pushback from students or parents with regards to the vaccines? Ms. Alexander, you wanna? Yeah, well, um, the vaccine is not mandatory as Ms. Neptune would have alluded to earlier. We are guided by the policy from the Ministry of um, Education, the Ministry of Health, Government of Grenada. So if and then when the government decides that um, it's mandatory, then TAMCC will just have to um, abide by that um, rule. Right now, we didn't make that mandatory, so there is no need for parents to have any pushback or for TAMCC to receive any pushback from parents. Thank you. Any other questions from the media? Rina, you can go ahead. Yes. Um, has Tam CC experienced due to COVID and the present situation um, a drop in persons uh, applying for any part of the any um, offers in any part of the the, the college? Um, from the School of Continuing Education, we had a reduce um, in the number of applicants for our part-time associate degree program. And we believe this is as a result of um, maybe economic impact on the working population. Um, however, we were happy um, that we were able to start the MedTech um, Associate Degree Program. So for some programs, it could be that we have been um, offering the programs um, continuously over the last five years or so. So for the MedTech, which we had a pause on, we were able to start with a new cohort. So it's a give and take for some of the programs. That's for the School of Continuing Education. Thank you. Any other questions, Rina? Oh, yeah. Ms. Alexander would have spoken about School for Continued Education, but what about generally, Ms. Neptune, if you have any um, information on that? What about... I... Uh, on Generally, um, I, I, I would say because we, we have a unique situation in Grenada where most of the students feed into TAMCC. So, and um, what we try to do, and let me take the opportunity to say to, to prospective students out there, if it is a situation where you do not have the resources to get to school, but you're able to even apply, we would try to work with you and get a sponsor for you. So we have a situation where we have um, most of, of the secondary school students feed into TAMCC. And because of that, we're seeing that we are um, basically all up application is, it's, there's no significant drop. There are programs, however, we want to encourage them to apply into the arts and humanity, the English, these are the low prescribed program and that has always been the case. So I wanted to use the opportunity to say to our students, a degree in English, um, English is the, the, the language that we speak. I'm still struggling with it. A lot of us struggle with it for, for whatever reason, because we have a play on, on, on the standard and, and the, the broken, the everyday language that we speak. But a degree in English can, um, it, 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 it would help you with almost every major. Um, arts and humanities, um, 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 the, the languages also is an area that can help you tremendously if you want, you know, to work in foreign affairs and all of that. So, but we no significant drop at all. However, um, we know that students sometimes apply and then that's the end of it. They probably circumstances change and then they decide they're not coming um, even if they apply. But we want to let the student, if you apply to the college and exhaust every opportunity um, 
to see if you can get some type of funding. I know the government assists in a, in a lot of cases. We have sponsors. We not we don't have for everybody that comes. But once you know you you're in need and we do the assessment, we are able to help as well. So we want to encourage you, apply and um, explore. It it God is is able to help financially. Um, we are at the college. We um, we are open to working with you. So apply and um, see what happens. Sometimes it's just work itself out by God's grace. Um, I also, also want to interject here and ask, um, make a call for um, the young men, or maybe even women in our nation to apply to a welding program at the St. Patrick's campus. We have an excellent welder teaching there and the number is, um, the program is under subscribe. So we're not sure if we'll be able to offer it this year, but we are calling on persons to apply for that program, a welding program at the St. Patrick's campus. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question about graduation. Um, we're at, being asked, what is the graduation fee? When will those who are supposed to graduate know if they meet the criteria? And when is the deadline for payments? Oh, you're you're on mute. You're, still muted. you're muted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, caught this time. Yeah, I would have shared a little bit on graduation before, but I'm happy people are asking because I want them to have the information. Now, for the month of November, um, from tomorrow, we are doing a rigorous process of assessing all our students. By um, the second week in, in October, we are going to give students that information. They would have to be on their emails. So take note by the second week in October, hopefully, um, but more um, definitely, we are going to give you that information. So you would know whether you would have, would have met the requirements for graduation. But I want to say to the students, speak, get your progress report, review it, speak to your advisor, see if you are missing anything. And if you are, it is not too late to sign up for a course because we are just starting. If it's a year one course, we are just starting year, we, we start year one in October graduation. You can walk in the graduation. Once you are deficient by six credits, you can walk. But see, if you, you're able to finish the course this semester, then you can get that certificate in January. If you, you for some reason, you know, you, you messed up in one of your courses. So by that time, now the graduation fee, because we were thinking about an actual physical graduation, that's why we moved the graduation to have a physical ceremony in December to give us enough time to plan. We had a fee in mind. Now COVID is forcing us to move back to a virtual graduation. We have not decided on the fee, but by that uh, second week later on in October, we would let you know. And um, because graduation is in December, by um, next month, November, we would give you the deadline as, as yet. But we are finalizing and soon we would give it to the students. Okay, I think we have time for maybe one more question. Um, Rina, you can go ahead. Yeah, I have a final question. Um, I want to ask, you would have mentioned... Um, we, we lost you, Rina. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. can start over. Yes, we're hearing you now. So mm -hmm. I was, I, Miss Alexander would have mentioned, Miss Alexander would have mentioned uh, the other campuses and something came to mind. Um, is there any way in which TAMCC would have operated or will be thinking about operating the St. Patrick and the Maribel campus in a different manner, understanding that sometimes, or well, the students, the number of students there are really low most of the time. Um, so is there any strategy in dealing with these um, specific campuses differently? The St. Patrick's campus, um, most of the programs that we offer the St. Patrick's campus are also offered at the Tantin campus, except, well, of course, most the technical, the electrical installation, the motor vehicles, engine systems, 
and the welding, those are the, and the hospitality services. But uh, we are not doing anything different at this time. As I said, we had looked at our programs, the units, and we are offering those that are more theoretical in nature now in the first semester. Come January 2022, then we'll have to see if we need to change some things if the COVID situation in Grenada does not change. If it doesn't improve, then we'll have to go back again at the program and see what can be done. If we'll have reduced class sizes, et cetera. That's for the St. Patrick's campus. Um, Ms. Neptune, I don't know if you want to speak to the Maribel campus. No, I, I just think um, we're basically, it's, it's the same. It's not that we not, uh, have not thought or considered, but we have not finalized anything, anything at the moment. Okay, thank you. That takes us to the end of our question and answer segment. Any unanswered questions from our Facebook, you can send to info at tamcc.edu.gd via email, and those will be addressed. Um, we hope we have clarified any questions you may have had. And so I want to say thank you to everyone who has tuned in this morning. Thank you to GIS for your broadcast support. Thank you also to the members of the media who are present today, and thank you for your questions. Thank you, special thanks to our panelists for your informative and detailed presentations. And of course, we urge you all to stay safe during this time. You can follow TAMCC on Facebook and Instagram for updates or visit our website at www.tamcc.edu.gd for more details. A repeat of our conference will also be available on our, on our platforms in the event that you missed any part of it including our YouTube page. Once again, thank you for joining us and have yourself a pleasant evening. to understand and, and, and cater for that. Right, well, I, I, so I wanna ask uh, uh, um, any one of you, what are any additional reflections you have before I, I come to the question of what next for education system? What else can we do with remedial to, 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 to address the learning